The PS5 Pro will have a new GPU comparable to the RX 6800X. This comparison isn't super accurate, but it's based on the number of computing units and shader units released. Since the PS5 GPU is based on RDNA 2, which is the architecture of the 6000 series GPU, it's fair to make this comparison. The CPU will be the same as the standard PS5, which we already know it's a Zen 2 CPU, so it's reasonable to assume it's similar to a Ryzen 7 3800X at best. It also has a 1TB NVMe Gen 4 SSD, so we need a faster PC, at least in gaming, but it will be in every other task as well. Then a configuration with a Ryzen 7 3800X and an RX 7800. 400, 950 euros. Obviously, we can go with new components because we'd go well over our budget. But if we buy from the second-hand market as we did, we'll demolish the PS5 Pro or at least, that's my hope. For our build, we've decided to go for an Intel i7 11700K. It performs better than the 3800X by quite a margin, about 10% in gaming, and it's more recent because the 3800X was released in July 2019, while the 11700K came out in March 2021. So, we're also fairly newer. We found a PC in Firenze with an MSI Z490 Pro, the Intel i7 11700K, 16 gigs of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance at 3200 megatransfer per second with a super old case, cooling and PSU. We went to check it out and the owner brought us into a garage. We spent about an hour there talking and trying to bring down the price from the original 500 euros which he knew was too high, to just about 200 euros. Not a crazy deal, but a good one. As for the GPU, we found an amazing deal. An RTX 3080 10GB from Zotac for just 305 euros, including shipping and all the fees, because we found it on a um, local marketplace. It has 6GB less VRAM than the RX 7800, which will be the bigger downgrade in this PC compared to the PS5 Pro, and we'll see how it, it affects gaming, especially at 4K. For 4K gaming, it may be a problem in the future, but as we'll see in a minute, we still have the budget to buy a GPU with more VRAM. We're completing this build with another 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance valued at about 30 euros. We add this line around, it's 3600 mega transfer, but we had obviously to bring it down to 3200 mega transfer per second to match the other 16 gigs. Then we've added a Kingston NV2 1TB NVMe, which is Gen 4, a Cursor GX 750, a Noctua NHD15, and a random case from Amazon, each at around 40 euros. All found in various online marketplaces, except for the case which I told you we bought on Amazon. So, for the entire PC, we spent just about 705 euros. You can either save this money or get a better GPU, a better CPU, or more storage. You could throw in an RTX 4070 with this leftover budget. The setup looks great, but how well does it perform in games? Let's test it out. I've tested the PC in four different games at 4K resolution. Warzone, Fortnite, Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077 so that you have a better understanding of AAA titles as well as eSport titles. As you can see from the graphs I'm showing you, in Warzone and Fortnite you can easily play at max settings without worrying about performances at all. Fortnite at ultra settings averages over 90 FPS and Warzone is about 90 FPS as well. And if you want to hit that 144 FPS, you just need to crank down a little bit the resolution solution and you'll be good to go. How do the AAA titles perform though? Not bad at all. Alan Wake 2 manages to stay at around 60 FPS on average at low settings, 50 at medium and 44 at high. The only issue is that the VRAM is almost always at full, like 9.2, 9.5 gigabytes occupied out of 10. So that's what I was talking about when I told you about the 10 gigabytes. Cyberpunk 2077, as long as you don't crank up the ray tracing to max, runs at well over 60 FPS. And if you turn down the settings a little bit, you can easily hit over 100 FPS. These results are extremely interesting because they show 
that this PC can handle every game just fine at 4K. Not at high frame rates, but more than playable. If you want to play at 1440p, you're going to have an even better experience, obviously. I know what you might be thinking, though. All these parts are used, as you don't have a warranty. What if a component breaks? That's something to consider. But I want to share my personal experience with you. I've built more than like 15, maybe 20 PCs using second-hand components. And only once did I have to use the warranty. When I did, it was the worst experience I've ever had. I sent the GPU an RX 6750 XT that constantly crashed due to the driver timeout error to the seller. I had to pay for the shipping and it's been over a month with no answer whatsoever so I wouldn't consider the lack of warranty as a deal breaker, at least for me. Moreover, being a computer, you can upgrade the components along the way, one at a time without having to throw away the entire thing once a new console comes out, as you need to do with your PlayStation or any console. So before spending 950 euros on a console, I highly recommend taking a look at Facebook Marketplace or similar online marketplaces. If you live here in Italy, subito.it or if you live in America, Craigslist and something like that. You'll get a lot more value for your money, you'll save some bucks and you'll also avoid a lot of emissions since you're buying something that otherwise would have been thrown away, which is something I personally care about. If you've liked this video, make sure to leave a like and comment with what kind of parts do you have in your system or if you'd prefer a PS5 Pro. The next video will be a series about flipping PCs, but I don't want to spoiler anything, so you should check out this until I publish the next video. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!